What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can change the color of a material and also how you can have multiple copies of the material with different colors in them inside of the model. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, and so this is a building that's uh, right up the road from where I work, my day job. And um, right now, the, the way that the building's set up is it has multiple different shades of brick on it. So it's got kind of a lighter gray brick and then also kind of a reddish brick as well. And what I've done is I've gone through and I've kind of like pre-selected the portions of the building that are going to have the different kinds of brick on them. So you don't have to watch me select a million different faces. But what I wanted to do is show you how to th use multiple different materials on the surface. And so what I want to do is I want to start by picking a brick material out of my library. And in this case, we can just go with this brick 09-1K. And in this case, because I've already got this grouped, what I can do is I can double click in here. I can pick the group that has the faces for the light gray brick in here. Now, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna adjust this just a little bit. So I wanna take this brick, make it just a little bit bigger. So in order to do that, you can sample the material inside of your material section of your tray. You can edit it, and then you can adjust it by typing in a new value in the size box right here. The other thing I wanna do with this brick is I wanna make it a little bit lighter. Well, you can do that using either the color wheel or these options right here. So notice what this is gonna do. So this is gonna take that brick material and it's just gonna lighten it up. And you can also click and drag on this as well. More on that in a minute. But basically what I've done is I've taken this material and I've customized it to this project. Well, now what I need is I need another brick material that's a little more red, but it's the same kind of brick. And so what I want to do is I want to reuse this texture. And so in this case, in order to do that, what you might think you need to do is you might think you need to sample the material and then within this group, apply that resampled material and adjust it. That's actually not going to work for you because if you come in here and you make this change, right, what you're doing is you're changing all of the brick everywhere, which is not what we want. So what we're going to do instead is there's actually a button in here, and I think it's new to either 2025 or 2026. Um, it used to be that inside of your select section of your materials, you could just click on the plus button and it would duplicate over everything that was associated with your current material. That doesn't work anymore, but that's because they've just moved it over into this button right here. What this button is going to do is it's going to allow you to have a material selected. So in your case, you might want to sample the material on your model. And then you can click on this button right here in order to duplicate that material. Well, when you do that, it's going to create a completely new version of the material, but it's going to maintain the map that you have down below and this other stuff. So basically that allows you to come in here and start making adjustments. So in this case, we're going to pick this and we're going to say red brick. Right, so this is going to be a red brick version. And so the most accurate way for me to match this material is actually to use the RGB value. And I personally have a plugin for my Chrome called Colorzilla. And what that Chrome plugin does is it allows me to sample things in an image. So what this does is this allows me to mouse over things in an image. And then if I click, it's going to copy that color to clipboard, but it's also going to show information about this over here if I click on it. So if I click on it right here, click on color picker panel, it's going to pop up this panel right here. Now you can get the RGB value for your colors any way that you want. You can even just use the color wheel if you decide that you want to do that. So you could use the color wheel right here in order to set the color of the material. Or in my case, I'm going to do an RGB value and I'm going to click on the drop down. I'm going to do an RGB and the RGB for this brick is going to be 177, 128, 113 right here. And I'm also going to check the box for colorize. Um, that just does a better job of making all of the materials uniform so you don't get any like weird coloration to this. But now I'm going to click on OK. Well, now I have a second brick in here that I can take and I can apply to this group right here. So now if I click on this, I've got the lighter and the darker brick in here. And so looking at this building, I actually don't like the way my first brick looked. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back to my color picker. And again, you can get the color however you want to. Um, this is just a good way for me to do it. And I'm going to pick maybe this color right here. I'll pop up my color picker panel so that I have this. And then I will sample this material right here. We'll go to edit. And we're going to go to RGB. And I'm going to type in a value of 
whatever your sampled value was. So in my case, this is 211, 195, 182, right here. So now I've got this lighter material and this darker material in here as separate materials inside of my SketchUp model. And so that's an easy way to match colors if you have a texture that you like in here. I'm gonna show you kind of a bonus tip though, um, where you can use the extension architectures in order to create a custom material from an image um, in order to create a material too. So architectures can be downloaded in the SketchUp extension warehouse and you can pick architectures right here. I can't remember if this is a pro feature or not. Um, if you click on new texture, you actually have the ability to upload an image. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a snip of that brick close up. So I've taken a snip right here. I'm gonna save that on my computer and I'm gonna do that for both of the kinds of bricks. And so I'll also take a snip of the lighter brick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload both of those into architectures. And so what you can do, and it's preferable to get an image where these are straight on. I don't have one of those because I just pulled this off of a satellite image or um, off of a Google Earth image. But what you can do is you can go in here and you can pick the different parts and pieces of the brick like this. And we'll click on continue. And what that does is that's going to pick this color right here. And you can actually click on this. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this to a stretcher pattern right here. But notice what that's doing is that's using the images that we have in here in order to create a brick material. And so in this case, I don't think you can go back and edit the material. And so what I need to do is I need to make sure that I don't pick up any bricks that have a dark corner on them because that messes up the way that everything tiles. We'll click on continue. We'll pick this new option right here. And notice how that's going to give me a brick material that I can import. And so now it's imported this into my SketchUp model. Well, now I'm just going to overwrite the material on the surface right here. Notice how this actually gives me a really good version of this brick. And you could always go in and adjust the size if you wanted to. So if you wanted this to be bigger, you could type in a value of like seven feet or whatever and make the bricks a little bit bigger. But now we'll do the same thing with the red brick. So I'm just going to add a new texture. And I was able to get a better image on this one, obviously. And it's always a good idea to pick up as many of these as you can just because each one of them is a little bit unique. And so the more bricks that you've sampled from, the more likely it is to tile properly. But now I'm going to do the same thing where I'm just going to do a stretcher pattern brick right here and we'll import this. And I'll apply that to this group right here. So you can see how that did an even better job of adding those bricks in. And the other thing you could do is you could also look at this image and see how tall this is, like how many bands fit in here. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bands fit in here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we maybe want to make it a little bit smaller. So maybe we'll bring this down to like one foot or one foot six. And notice I'm just adjusting this so that I can fit more bands in here, right? But now this is going to be pretty close to accurate. And then we could resize the other one to kind of match that as well. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not getting too crazy with it, but I just want these bricks to be the same general size right here. But now I've got materials that actually match the real world materials of that building inside of this space. All right, so that's two ways to match materials in your SketchUp model. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you're using either one of these and if you have any tips for doing this. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.